Hi YouTube, hope you're having a great day. I've been out in the market for a outdoor speaker system, which does not break the bank. And I was doing uh, my research for a sub $200 speaker system. And so I went to the internet and really on Amazon and uh, looked up, you know, what, uh, what kind of speakers are available for that price point. And uh, I came across this uh, Ion brand. It seems to be a popular brand for these type of portable outdoor speakers. Um, they even carry this brand and multiple other models at Costco um, and, and Amazon, of course. Um, so I came across this one and I was looking for what's their best seller. So one of the best sellers that came across on Amazon is the Ion Block Rocker Plus. And uh, that one has uh, great ratings on on that model sells for about $160. Um, but then I came across this Ion Highlander, which uh, was released only recently, I believe April of 2023. And um, it seems to be very similar to the to the other model, the Block Rocker Plus, uh, which is very popular um, and has good ratings. So I thought, uh, you know, since this is newer, what's the difference? And really the only major difference I could see is that the Block Rocker Plus is 100 watts, and this one is 120 watts. And as you know, wattage is uh, very important in case of speakers for the output. And so I figured 120 watt is better than 100 watts. So yeah, that's what I have, and I picked it up, and um, it's got a 50 hour rechargeable battery. I will speak more about the battery. And it also has the IPX5 water resistant rating. Really what that means is that uh, it can handle a little bit of rain. So if you are out and about and uh, there's rain coming, you know, coming on the speaker, it's, it's gonna be able to handle it okay. Um, of course, you can't really, you know, dunk it in a swimming pool, but um, rain and stuff like that is just fine. It, you know, it's hardy enough for that. Um, if I show you the, the feature set on this, um, it's a high powered all weather portable speaker system, as it says. Bluetooth 5.0, 120 watt speaker system, an eight inch woofer and a three inch driver. Um, of course, the 50 hour battery, um, IPX5 water resistant rating. There's a bass boost button, which will amp up the boost, the, the, the bass. Uh, you also have the AM FM radio with 10 presets. Also has this luggage style um, built in handles and wheels. So you can pop this up and down. Uh, very much like a like a you know luggage suitcase, um, and it's on on two wheels, so you can roll it around easy. You have uh, and that's important by the way uh, because this thing is about 23 or 26 pounds, uh, so it's not uh, particularly light, but not terribly heavy that you can't pick it up. Uh, two USB charge ports, um, and that's great for charging your devices. Um, you also have the microphone input as well as a supplied microphone. Uh, so you can use it for karaoke or making announcements or stuff like that. And then you also have the aux input, which is good because if you have a device that does not have Bluetooth connectivity, uh, you can simply connect it using an auxiliary input uh, into the speaker. It also has the NFC enabled easy pair feature. So if you have devices that use that protocol, you could use it for that purpose. Uh, so overall, that's the feature set. But without further ado, let me open the box and show you what it contains. Okay, so now we have everything out of the box. I unpacked it in the interest of time. Basically, what you really get is this uh, six feet power cable, um, very basic power cable, obviously not much to talk there. There is this documentation and this microphone. The microphone is eight feet, uh, you know, the cable or the cord here is eight feet in length, which I think is pretty decent. Um, and it's very uncomplicated, um, very basic microphone. It's got an on off switch here, uh, very analog, so which is great. And um, yeah, not much to discuss here. Uh, we'll see how it really works, but I would imagine it's to be pretty basic. And this is the end that goes on into the main unit. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And that's really all you get out of the box. All right, so let's take a look uh, at the main unit itself now. Uh, as you can see, um, looks wise, it's pretty simple. It's not as uh, uh, loud or uh, fancy in terms of its look. I think it is a more sophisticated look compared to some of the other Ion speakers, uh, which has a lot of lights and stuff. This one doesn't have that, um, which I personally prefer, but of course it's a matter of taste. Uh, here you have the front uh, uh, main 
uh, speaker the, and, and of course uh, the controls up top. Um, on the sides, there's not much to speak. Uh, there's no real feature. I think the body on this thing is built nice. It seems very sturdy. Um, doesn't feel like, um, you know, it's gonna break or anything. Um, here you have the handles, which is very suitcase style. I wanna say it goes up uh, very similar to a suitcase, really, uh, about two feet uh, in length. And you can, you know, hold it in, in multiple heights, which is great, depending on how, you know, tall you want this. Um, out here is your power cord. So you basically stick in your power cord in here and um, it's really nicely cased because it's IPX5 rated. Um, it's going to, you know, keep moisture and water out of, uh, out of here. Um, there's a little bit of details here, uh, but we'll talk about the battery in a moment. Um, here you have the wheels. Um, I think that these wheels, Ion has done a good job because, um, you know, these seem like, you know, one of those suitcase uh, type uh, wheels. Um, obviously, they're not meant to be hauled around like a suitcase, but uh, I don't think they're gonna fall off or, you know, have a, you will have a problem with these, you know, depending on use, of course, but uh, they seem sturdy to me. Um, yeah, so nothing on the sides. There are, of course, these handles on either side uh, besides um, the, the handle over here. So that's kind of a look of the speaker all around. Now let's take a proper look at the unit's interface and of course its power system. So one of the you know major complaints that people have about these ion speakers or speakers of this type is that uh, these units are advertised with 100 hours battery or 50 hours battery, but you know over time and fairly quickly, uh, these batteries uh, don't seem to be holding up to their original promise of 50, 100 hours, whatever it is. This one is 50 hours. And part of the reason is because people don't realize it's not one of your lithium ion batteries that goes into these units. It's actually a lead acid battery uh, that goes in here. Uh, and with the lead acid batteries, it's basically your automobile style of battery that you are really talking about. So if you are familiar with the maintenance of automobile batteries, such as lithium, I'm um, sorry, lead acid batteries, you will need to keep it charged. Uh, so the way you do this is, uh, you know, you will have to keep this unit, of course, not in an exceedingly hot or exceedingly cold environment. That's important. And also, um, it is acceptable to leave your sound system plugged in. So it will not overcharge the battery. Uh, and it's it's probably a good practice if you do that, uh, because it will keep your, your battery that's contained in here, you know, in, in peak performance. Uh, also, if you leave the battery level low, and for example, if you don't charge it for three to four months, then this will permanently, you know, end up damaging the battery, it'll lose capacity, and you will not get the same performance. So you should be mind mindful if you are having one of these type of units that you will need to kind of care for its battery, and, and then you will get continue to get good performance out of it. But if you treat it as a lithium ion battery, like your phone or other electric devices, then you're going to have problems down the road with the battery. So this is a really important, um, you know, point to consider if you're going to own one of these units. When they ship this to you, uh, they don't necessarily come completely charged. So the recommend the manufacturer recommendation is for you to take this unit out and charge it for about 12 hours, uh, and that will basically completely charge this this unit. And and now it's ready to use. If you don't do that and you start using it uh, immediately, then the battery is going to have a problem. Uh, so, uh, or in, in terms of you know its performance. So it's important that you you know do what the manufacturer is recommending uh, so that you have longer life with the internal battery it has. And of course, with because it's a you know lead acid battery, uh, you will need to you know treat it just like your automobile battery. If you're going to discard this down the road, like in a few years. Um, you know, like eight, 10 years, uh, let's say if this is not performing to your expectation uh, and you want to discard it, um, you will need to treat it like one of those automobile batteries and not just throw it in the trash. Um, so that wouldn't be very nice. Okay, so that's the battery part. Now let's uh, talk a little bit about the main interface. Okay, so on the main interface, basically you have uh, your main volume button for the microphone and you have the um, volume button for the for the speaker itself. Uh, so you got these two knobs for this purpose. Um, 
one of the other things that uh, probably is going to be useful to point out is that when you see this red portion on either side of these dials, what they're really trying to say is that, uh, you know, this, you know, if you keep this at the white uh, area, it's going to perform much better versus if you bring it to the red area. Yes, you're amping up the volume uh, if you bring it all the way, but it's, you are going to experience, dis experience distortion of the sound output. So if you want the sound to be loud, but experience no distortion, I would recommend that you don't uh, crank it up all the way uh, or bring it to the red area. Try to keep it in the white area and you will have better quality uh, you know, audio output uh, because you will experience less distortion of sound. So that's something to, to keep in mind. And this is, this is why this uh, red indicator has been given uh, to us as users. Uh, out here, you have obviously the main power button. So if I hold it. Power on. All right, so it's turned on. That was really loud. Let me um, make it in the center. So you can see that uh, the battery is, uh, is the indicator is uh, all the way up. So this is this unit is fully charged. Um, here you have, you know, again, because it is IPX5 rated, they have done a good job of sealing on these two outlets. So you have the microphone input. This is where you're going to put in, you know, the, the socket here on the microphone. And if you have an auxiliary device, I don't have anything on hand, but if you want to connect it to another uh, aux based input, you know, from a radio, from a, your mobile device or something else, you can stick that in right here. And uh, if you're not using it, uh, it's best to keep this completely sealed so that there is no moisture, you know, going in. Um, on the other side, you have the charger, the USB chargers. Uh, this one is five volt, one amp, um, what they have given us. It's sufficient to charge um, like mobile devices, uh, stuff like that, but it's not as high powered because the amperage is not that high. Um, you, so, you know, for charging a laptop, for example, this is probably not gonna be enough but you are going to be just fine in charging a phone or you know a watch, stuff like that, which is what most people will be using it anyhow. Um, okay, so moving on, here you have uh, the Bluetooth button. So all you will need to do is press and release this button to pair to a Bluetooth device. Uh, should be pretty easy. Once you, you know, put this on, it's going to you know put the unit on uh, Bluetooth discovery mode, and so you can pair it up and uh, you know start streaming your your audio. It's also a you know got a bass boost button, and uh, this will basically enhance the overall bass frequency response. You also have the radio selector. This button sets the radio to either FM or AM, or it can also be used to turn the radio off. Right, so that's what this is for. Um, you also have preset buttons uh, for different stations, one, two, three, four. Uh, press these buttons to tune into a radio station, or you can, you know, toggle uh, on a Bluetooth connected device. Uh, if you want to seek, um, you know, uh, or, you know, seek another station, jump to the next available station. You can hold either button down for a few seconds until it starts to seek a station. And when powered off and then on again, the unit will remember the last station it was on and start at that station, uh, which is which is cool. Uh, you have a play or pause button, uh, and that would be this guy here. Um, you have this to press to play or pause a track from a connected Bluetooth device. So you don't actually actually have to operate the main cell phone, it, it's, you know, assuming you're uh, streaming from a cell phone, you don't have to do it from there. You can just, uh, you know, come in here and pause it uh, from right here, which is great. Um, you also have a really interesting feature, uh, which I'm, you know, I don't have this, uh, any use for it right now, but uh, I'll explain what this is for. So you see this link button and what it is meant for is to pair this particular um, speaker with another Ion Highlander speaker. I'm not sure if it is going to accept any Ion uh, speaker, but if, uh, you know, according to uh, what the manual says, uh, it will pair with another Highlander, but um, I would assume it will, you know, pair with other Ion speakers as well if you have access to them. So what you can basically do is if you have two speakers, you can press this button 
and hold this button to start stereo linking to another speaker. And if you double press that button, it'll delink it. So the idea is that if you link these, uh, the two speakers together and they are placed in different parts of your, your, your party area or whatever, um, you are going to be able to hear the output of the audio coming from two speakers simultaneously. Uh, so you create a, a more immersive uh, environment. So that's what this is for. Um, but like I said, I don't have another speaker to pair this with, so I can't really um, you know, validate um, how it really performs. But I think it's a cool feature uh, for, for many of you. Um, other than this, of course, you have the main section here to show um, the, the panel that is gonna show through multiple indicators what, what it's for, uh, but base, or what's on or what's not on. So you have the charging indicator, the power icon, you will also see a lightning bolt icon. Uh, the lightning bolt icon will illuminate when the, the power cable is connected to the wall power. So right now, I haven't connected this to the wall power, uh, so, but if it was, it's going to you know, show a lightning indicator. Uh, you also have the AM or FM radio, um, your bass, bass boost indicator, if it was turned on, and the link status. So if you have this paired to another speaker, you're gonna see it on this, um, area, you know, whether you have that paired or not. So I think that's about it as far as uh, how this whole thing is set up. Um, now let's turn this on and see how it performs. Okay, so now let's try to actually turn the unit on. Mind you, I don't have it uh, connected to a wall outlet, so it's running on battery power. So all I do is uh, hold this for one or two seconds and it turns it on. You're not seeing that lightning bolt uh, on here, which means it's not uh, connected to a wall outlet and it's running on battery power. As you can see, it's charged all the way. I'm gonna try and connect this to my iPad here. And for doing that, I will need to simply turn on the Bluetooth uh, here, of course. And then here, I'll just uh, click on this Bluetooth icon. And as soon as I do this, you can see the Bluetooth uh, symbol is flashing. And out here, I see Highlander. So I'll simply need to click on Highlander and it's going to pair my device. Uh, so as you can see, it's connected. And uh, so now these two devices are paired. If your device does uh, prompt you for a passcode, all you will need to do is uh, press 0000 four times and uh, that should be enough to connect the devices uh, over. Uh, same thing, by the way, goes for this link feature. If you're linking or you're doing, you're doing NFC, um, which is another way to pair it, uh, you will need to press that code 0000. That's all really it accepts. So if you're ever prompted, just use that code and you should be fine. Um, okay, so the device is connected. I'll show you how it uh, performs here in a moment, but let me also show you the radio feature. So if I need to turn the radio on, I press this button and it puts on studies around the world. You FM1. See, uh, you go on this mission to just So learn it's on more FM1. And uh, if I and want to toggle it, I will simply put it to FM2 and then to AM. And then if I press it again, it turns off the radio altogether. So it's a really a toggle from turning it on, you know, skipping through AM, FM1, FM2, and then turning it off. So you just keep click clicking and uh, that's how you, you do it. Now if I put this on again and I'm on 91.5, I will, uh, I will simply need to seek another station. I press this button and uh, it'll, if I just hold, you know, press it once real quick, it's gonna just flip, you know, point 0.1. But if I hold it, then it's going to start seeking and automatically adjust as you're probably. So I have really, the volume is not cranked up. As you can see, it's really low. So you can hear me talk, but um, yeah, that's how you basically seek the various stations. So it's pretty, pretty intuitive, uh, you know, back and forth. And um, if I want to turn the radio off, I simply toggle it all the way up to AM and then I am on off position. The, the bass boost, uh, we'll take a look in a moment, but let me now uh, put some something on here to show you how it performs on Bluetooth. Okay, so I'm now going to uh, stream some music onto this device and see if there's any major distortion in the audio. Um, we're gonna try it at the lowest level first, um, and then at the midpoint, and then maybe at the highest point. And uh, we'll see how this thing performs. So let's give it a shot. The audio 
video is pretty smooth. Let's try the midpoint. Okay, so you know what I can already tell? There is certainly some disruption uh, to the music or distortion of the music uh, if I crank up the volume all the way high. Um, it's not terrible. I think in a party situation, you'll probably just be fine um, at this level. Uh, but if you want some really good music output uh, with minimal distortion, then I would suggest that you stick to the manufacturer recommendation of staying in this white zone. Um, I think if you come down at the low level, obviously the, the sound fades away. Uh, but I think um, this white zone is really the sweet spot. Uh, so that's a good uh, indicator. This one, maybe not so much, but in a party situation, like I said, you'll probably be okay. Okay, so now let's try to do a microphone test as well. So if you are going to make announcements or have a karaoke uh, situation, how will the speaker perform? So for this test, we are going to use the supplied microphone, which is right here. I'm gonna put the jack inside here and uh, we are ready to go. Now, to perform this test, I'm going to make the speaker volume at this highest uh, level where we know there's no distortion. And uh, in order to control the microphone, uh, I'm going to try it at three levels, at this level, uh, the mid level, and crank it up all the way. And I think um, we would have a little bit of disruption, but we'll give it a give it a go and see how it performs. So let's try the low level first. I'm going to now turn on the microphone and uh, speak at those three levels. Hello, hello, testing one, two, three. Okay, not much you can probably hear, trying the midpoint. Hello, testing one, two, three. Now crank it up to this white space. Hello. Hello, testing one, two, three. And now at the highest level. Hello, hello, testing one, two, three. Okay, I can certainly hear a little bit of disruption at this highest level, um, but overall not too bad. Uh, actually, it's better than I expected. So anyway, that is the test of the microphone. Hopefully YouTube recording picked it up and you can actually hear some of it, but if not, just take my word for it, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. Okay. So one last thing to mention about this unit is uh, about the battery relationship to the volume. Uh, this is something that a lot of people uh, don't necessarily think of. Um, you know, because of the nature of the battery and how it's used, if you do crank up the volume all the time, um, you are going to drain the battery much sooner. Versus if you're playing it in a more relaxed mode, uh, it's not going to use as much power uh, to, for that kind of, you know, output. Uh, so you can get better better battery life. So something to be aware of uh, that, you know, the more you play out on high volumes, um, if you are actually using battery and it's not connected to a wall unit, then um, you're going to eat up the battery power quicker. Um, so anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If it helped you learn a little bit about this unit and um, it helps you out and you enjoyed it, uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And um, so give me a like and also let me know in the comments down below on what are your thoughts about this unit. I'd love to hear from you and, uh, you know, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.